Burke Traveling Rap Music's High Ground by Sheila Simmons Plain Dealer Reporter December 17, 1995 The Plain Dealer, Cleveland, Ohio Imagine this scenario. You run a tiny Cleveland record label with no ties to the six major recording and distribution companies who supply 90% of music to the U.S. market. You record an underground rap album with an unknown, underpaid group. Then your artists sign with another label, release new product, and explode into a multi-platinum act. You release that first forgotten album nationally, it rises as high as 29 on the R&B charts, and it is twice flagged as a fast-selling pace-setter by Billboard magazine. What does the record industry think of you now? People have the opinion that we're geniuses, Kermit Henderson says, of himself and Diego Black, partners in Cleveland's Stony Burke Records. But the pair have hardly toiled away in waiting for the day when Stony Burke would become the surprise success story of the rap music industry. What Black really knows is promoting product for such labels as Rap-A-Lot, Relativity, and Bellmark Records. Henderson really knows retail. Henderson's family-owned Dolls Rapid Creations on Euclid Ave has been ranked as one of the top five rap retailers in the country. It has been featured in Billboard magazine, and Henderson was named 1991's Retailer of the Year by Los Angeles trade magazine Urban Network. Henderson only got into the music business after people familiar with his knowledge of how to sell rap records kept sending aspiring rappers to him for assistance. Uninterested in managing and promoting the acts, but encouraged by his mother, Henderson invested in some acts. B-O-N-E, Enterprise, was one of them. It was a fresh-sounding rap group that consisted of Lazy Bone, Crazy Bone, Wish Bone, and Busy Bone. Flesh and Bone joined the act when it became Bone Thugs in Harmony. In 1992, they recorded the album Faces of Death largely intended as a marketing tool to win a recording contract with a major or large independent label. But label after label passed on bone. Nobody wanted to deal with Cleveland, Henderson says. It was like it was Timbuktu, miss. Then NWA co-founder and Ruthless Records owner Eazy E listened to the group rap backstage at a Cleveland concert. He sent the young men to Los Angeles, where under the name of Bone Thugs in Harmony, the group recorded its four million selling extended play record, Creeping on Ah Come Up. Stony Burke again unsuccessfully shopped Faces of Death around, so just before Bone Thugs released its debut album, the double platinum E1999 Eternal, Stony Burke expanded and advertised its own earlier release of Bone's Faces of Death. Henderson went from being a retailer, which he calls a bottom of the totem pole role in the record industry, to competing with major labels in their own arena. And I wasn't really trying, he says with a chuckle. Faces of Death is of underground content and recorded on just eight tracks. Many of today's major recordings are done in 12 to 24 track studios for better, fuller sound quality. But on its own lesser terms, Faces certainly holds its own. Still, two scenarios likely boosted Faces to hit status. Rap fans could not get enough of Bone, a young group who blazed the rap scene with a new sing-songy style and staccato delivery at a time when rap music was growing stale and predictable. Secondly, Black was savvy in his marketing. Black faxed and mailed flyers with this catchy introduction to retailers large and small. Before it was ruthless, it was Stony Burke. Before creeping on a come-up, it was faces of death. Before they were thugs, they were the Enterprise, before Easy e signed them, he heard this album. I didn't want to trick anybody that this is new stuff, Black says. It was for the true hardcore Bone fans. So they would say, let me get this first stuff because it's true underground. Black also visited stores nationwide. He left behind business cards, a free copy of the album for store play, and a news release. He took orders himself to save retailers the hassle of placing orders by phone or mail, it worked. Faces of Death is nearing gold, 500,000 copies. I like radio, the 22-year-old promoter says, but my concentration is in the streets. 
To me, a record sells when you're in your car, when you're in the club or over a friend's house. Someone will hear something nine different times before they realize they need to get it, Black says. So I try to think of nine different ways they can see it and want to go buy it. Stony Burke has meanwhile signed two other rappers, Mr. Money Lock and Dre Bone the Vigilante. It is targeting release of the latter around January, possibly followed a month later by Mr. Money's debut. Stony Burke also plans to release a single from Faces of Death next month. Photo by Andrew Sifranic, Plain Dealer, Photographer Diego Black and Kermit Henderson, Pose Outside Henderson's Dolls Rapid Creations Record Store. The partner Stony Burke Records is the rap music industry's surprise success story. Beyond.